Next, which two of the following statement concerning the tax treatment of capital expenditure are always correct? Number one, a good vehicle with zero CO2 emission will qualify for first year allowance? Answer is no, because it is not a good vehicle, it is about new vehicle. If a new vehicle with zero CO2 emission, that will qualify for first year allowance. Second, expenditure on a building qualify for 3% structure building allowance from the date of acquisition. No, it is from the date of use. Third, the main pool qualify for the small WDA if the balance after disposal is less than 1000. Again, no, because this 1000 amount depend upon account period, accounting period. Fourth, the AIA is allocated to additions in the special rate pool in priority to addition in the main pool. Absolutely right, because while alloc allocating AIA, first it is allocated to special rate pool in priority. E. Balancing adjustment is calculated on the disposal of building on which structure building allowance have claims. So answer is no. F. On disposal of a building that qualify for structure building allowance, the seller increases the sale price by SBA claim. So he can do so. That is right. Next question, Jakinita started trading on 1st August 2022 and prepare accounts to 31st December each year. Her trading profit for the first two periods are as follows. Fifth month ended 31st December 22, 10,500 and for the year ended 31st December 23, 24,000. The trading income is uh, to be calculated for 22, 23. This is the question. So we know that uh, in case of new business, the first tax year is uh, calculated as from the date of commencement of business, which is 1st August 22, to the following tax year ending date, 5th April 2023. So for this year, you have to consider in the first five months from 1st August 22 to 31st December 22, the profit is 10,500 but we have to consider three months more profit so in the next year's profit of 24,000 we will take up a portion of three months profit and this will be 6,000 so it is in total 10,500 plus 6,000 16,500 we have to do this. We have to the date of starting of business. We have to calculate the tax year end of this date. So, we have to do the date of starting of business 1st August 22. We have to do the following tax year end of this date. 5th April 23. So, we have to do the calculation of the period of the profit. So, from 1st August 22 to 31st December 22, there is 10,500 profit given. Then, we have to add. Uh, the portion of January, February, March profit in this because uh, again we have to calculate the profit from 1st August 22 to 5th April 23. In the next uh, question, Marek decided to cease trading on 31st January 23 after trading for many years. His tax adjusted profit for the recent year have been year under 30th April. 2021 40,000, year ended 30th April 22, 10,000, and period ended 31st January 23. So, first we have to consider the date of uh, closing down the business that is 31st January 23, and in this period the profit earn is 14,000. Also, we need to consider whether previous accounting period's profit has been assessed or not. So, as the previous accounting period ended on 30th April 22 and it, this date lies on the same tax year 22-23. So, we have to consider this profit as well. This is 10,000 and uh, last uh, we have to deduct the our lab profit which is 3,000. So, it is 21,000 in total that should be recorded as a profit. We have to do this year that the date of our tax year end over. उस डेट का हमें प्रॉफिट असेस करना है लास्ट ईयर में प्लस हमने ये भी देखना है कि पिछला अकाउंटिंग पीरियड क्या हमारा इसी टैक्स ईयर के दौरान एंड हुआ है हमारा बिजनेस एंड हो रहा है 31st जनवरी 23 ये टैक्स ईयर है 22 23 टैक्स ईयर 22 23 स्टार्ट होता है 6 अप्रैल 22 से लेकर 5 अप्रैल 23 तक 
सो प्रीवियसली हम करंट ईयर बेसिस को फॉलो कर रहे हैं सो इफ वी आर फॉलोइंग करंट ईयर बेसिस तो इस मीन दैट थर्टी अप्रैल ट्वेंटी टू का प्रॉफिट अभी असेस नहीं हुआ तो ये भी फाइनल ईयर ऑफ ट्रेड में ही असेस होगा नेक्स्ट इज अ क्वेश्चन एलिजबथ एंड हैंनरी हैव बिन इन पार्टनरशिप फॉर मैनी ईयर प्रिपेयरिंग अकाउंट्स टू थर्टी फर्स्ट दिसंबर ईच ईयर अनटिल थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई ट्वेंटी टू प्रॉफिट फॉर शेयर इन द रेशियो सेवेंटी थर्टी टू लिजबथ एंड हैंनरी मीन्स सेवेंटी इज द शेयर ऑफ लिजबथ एंड थर्टी इज़ द शेयर ऑफ हैंनरी विद नो सैलरी एलोकेटेड टू ईदर पार्टनर फ्राम फर्स्ट अगस्त ट्वेंटी टू द प्रॉफिट शेयरिंग रेशियो वॉज एडजस्टेड टू एटी ट्वेंटी आफ्टर एलोकेटिंग अ सैलरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड पर एनम टू हैंनरी Uh, the adjusted trading profit for the accounting year, 31st December 22, was 1 lakh 20 thousand. How much of the profit for the year ended 31st December is allocated to Henry? So we need to consider that uh, the profit of 1 lakh 20 thousand is to be a portion in these two period where the accounting ratio has been changed. Uh, means uh, until 31st July, in the first seven months, the profit is shared between 70-30. So the profit of first seven months is one lakh twenty thousand multiplied by seven divided by twelve. This is the profit of first seven months. This is seventy thousand, right? At that time, there is no salary, there is no interest. So this profit uh, would be shared between partners in the ratio of seventy thirty. So remaining profit, seventy uh, thousand profit, would be shared in the ratio of. Seventy thirty. So, if seventy thousand is a total profit, what is the share of Henry? Multiply by three divided by ten. So, twenty one thousand is the share of Henry. Twenty one thousand is the share of Henry in first seven months profit. Then we have to calculate the next five months profit. This is five by twelve, and uh, it will be fifty thousand. Out of this fifty thousand profit, they have to pay a salary of twenty four thousand per month, if, uh, per year. If the twenty four thousand is a salary for a whole year, what is the salary for five months period? So it would be ten thousand. This is the ten thousand salary that is to be given to Henry. So ten thousand salary will receive by Henry. From fifty thousand, you have to deduct these ten thousand, and the remaining profit of forty thousand should be distributed between Henry and Elizabeth in eighty twenty ratio. So Henry's ratio is as twenty, eighty twenty to Elizabeth and Henry. So twenty is the ratio of Henry. So forty thousand, twenty percent is eight thousand. That is the total profit of uh, Henry. That is thirty nine thousand. हमें क्या करना था पहले सात महीने का प्रॉफिट हमने टोटल फाइंड आउट किया ये रेशियो सेवन थर्टी सेवेंटी थर्टी के रेशियो से शेयर किया गया थर्टी परसेंट हैंनरी का शेयर था वो लोकेट कर दिया ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड तो फर्स्ट सेवन मंथ्स का प्रॉफिट फाइंड करके उसे सेवेंटी थर्टी के रेशियो से लोकेट कर दिया हैंनरी का रेशो आ गया ट्वेंटी वन दैन नेक्स्ट फाइव मंथ्स के प्रॉफिट में जिसकी अमाउंट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड है टेन थाउजेंड सैलरी हैंनरी को मिली और बाकी जो प्रॉफिट बचा फोर्टी थाउजेंड उसका ट्वेंटी परसेंट हैंनरी को मिला नॉट इज एल्बर्ट एंड Jolene have been in partnership for many years, preparing account to 30th September each year. Albert and Jolene have balances on their capital account as 50,000 and 40,000. The partnership agreement provides for Albert to receive an annual salary of 25,000 and both partner to receive interest on capital of 4%. The aggregate profit sharing ratio is 1:3 to Albert and Jolene, and the adjusted trading profit is 80,000. So here we need to find the interest and in capital, salary, interest and in capital, and then remaining profit to be shared between partners. So first, it is a salary of twenty five thousand, which is to be given to Albert. Right, this is total twenty five thousand. This is share of Albert. This is for Julian. Interest and in capital is uh, allocated at the rate of four percent. So capital of uh, Albert is fifty thousand. So four percent of fifty thousand would be two thousand, and four percent of forty thousand is sixteen hundred. So that is total thirty six hundred. So out of a profit of eighty thousand, you have allocated twenty eight thousand six hundred, and remaining profit of. Uh, 
51,400 is to be located between these partners in ratio 1-3. So 51,400 multiplied by 1 divided by 4 is the share of Albert. So it is 12,850. Then total profit share of Albert which has been asked in the question is 27 and 39,850. So what do we do? We allocate the salary to Albert ko, then interest and capital allocate kiya jayega. and after that we need to know what, what is the remaining profit that is to be distributed between Albert and Julien. So for this we have calculated the total salary which is 25,000 total interest and capital which is 3600 hai, and remaining if you pass uh, out of 80,000 uh, when detected these two amount you will get the remaining profit of 51,400 and this is to be distributed in ratio 1-3. Next question Tim, Abhirup and Angela have uh, been in partnership for many years preparing accounts to 31st December each year. The partnership agreement provides for Tim to receive an annual salary of 15,000. The aggregate profit sharing ratio is 132. Then Tim left the partnership on 31st May 22. So it is a case of retirement. The adjusted trading profit for the accounting period 31st December 22 are 360,000. So they are asking about how much of the profit for the year ended 31st December 22 is allocated to Tim. As Tim has left the partnership on 31st May 22, it means we have to consider the profit for the period of five months only. So the five months profit is 3,60,000 is the profit of whole year, then the five months profit would be 3,60,000 multiplied by 5 divided by 12, this is 1,50,000. 1,50,000 is a profit for this period. But before allocating it in the profit sharing ratio, Tim has to receive a salary of 15,000, annual salary of 15,000. If the annual salary is 15,000, what is the amount to be received by Tim in these 5 months? Again, we have to find out the 5 months portion and that is 6,250. So out of 1,50,000 profit, first Tim will receive a salary of 6,250, then remaining profit of 1,43,750 ,00, is to be distributed in ratio of 1,3,2 and Tim's ratio is 1 by 6. So, 143750 multiplied by 1 divided by 6 the ratio of Tim is 23958 so 23958 plus his salary of 6250 30208 is total share of profit so option is B Next, Nazim and Laura have been in partnership for many years, preparing account to 31st October each year and sharing profits equally. On 1st June 22, Fabiola, Fabiola joined the partnership. The aggregate profit sharing ratio was 2 to 1 to Nazim, Laura and Fabiola. The tax adjusted trading profit for the year is uh, ended for the year ended 31st October 22 and 23 is 2,40,000 and 3 lakh. Which three of the following statement about Fabiola's trading income were correct? So the first option is that uh, Fabiola will be assessed on trading income of 20,000 in the tax year 22-23. So here we need to calculate this. Uh, date of joining of Fabiola is 1st June 22. So as per the tax year rule, first tax year rule, from the date of commencement of uh, business, 1st June 22, to 5th April 23. This is the period in which we have to, uh, for which we have to assess that profit in the first tax year. So we have been given the adjusted profit of 240,000 for the year ended 31st October 22 and uh, 3 lakh for next year. So the first accounting period ends on 31st October 22 means uh, after joining uh, of Fabiola the Accounting year ending date is 31st October. So it is a period of 5 months June, July, August, September, October. So if 2,40,000 is a profit of whole year, what is the profit for the 5 months? So it will be 
वन लैख वन लैख इज द प्रॉफिट फॉर फर्स्ट फाइव मंथ्स पीरियड देन इन दिस वन लैख टोटल प्रॉफिट द शेयर ऑफ फेब्यूला इज वन बाय फाइव सो इट विल बी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सो ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड इज अ प्रॉफिट फॉर फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जून ट्वेंटी टू टू थर्टी फर्स्ट अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी टू बट रिमेंबर दैट वी हैव टू असेस अ प्रॉफिट इन द फर्स्ट टैक्स ईयर फ्राम फर्स्ट जून ट्वेंटी टू टू फिफ्थ अप्रैल ट्वेंटी थ्री सो अगेन वी हैव टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द प्रॉफिट ऑफ थ्री लैख द पीरियड रिमेनिंग इन द फर्स्ट टैक्स ईयर इज नवंबर दिसंबर जनवरी फरवरी मार्च अगेन द पीरियड ऑफ फाइव मंथ्स सो इट विल बी वन लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड and in this 125000 the share of uh, fabiola is 25000 one fifth share right so after that uh, we need to consider that if the fabiola's profit is 25000 for this period so the for- total profit to be assessed in the first tax year is 45000 second thing that uh, we have to assess the profit in the normal current year basis in the second year of fabiola So, if three lakh is the profit of the second year, the share of profit of uh, Fabiola is sixty thousand. So, in the first tax year, Fabiola's forty-five thousand earning will be assessed. In the second tax year, sixty thousand. And in both cases, twenty-five thousand of profit is uh, assessed in the first tax year as well as second tax year. So, it is said to be profit overlap. So, these are the three information: first tax year profit, second tax year profit, and overlap profit. Now you can see which adjustment, which point is correct. First, Fabiola will be assessed on trading income of twenty thousand. Wrong. Fabiola will be assessed on trading income of forty-five thousand in the tax year twenty-two, twenty-three. Right? We have assessed that. Uh, Fabiola will be assessed on trading income of forty-five thousand in next year. No, this is sixty thousand. Fabiola will be assessed on trading income of sixty thousand in the tax year twenty-three, twenty-four, and then Fabiola will have a overlap profit of twenty-five thousand. these three statements are correct the next question is naomi is uh, self employed for the year ended 5th april 23 she made a trading losses of 110000 having made a trading profit of 24000 for the year ended 5th april 22 naomi also had employment income of 92000 for the tax year 21 22 what is the maximum loss relief claim Which Naomi can make against her total income for the tax year twenty one twenty two. So here we need to apply the rule of maximum amount that can be set off. If uh, we have to consider the loss to be set off against trading profit, there is no restriction. But if loss is to be set off against the other income, the restriction is applied of maximum fifty thousand. So the total amount to be set off. is 74000 in this year to mere pa situation hai ki agar humne loss ko set off karna hai against uh, trading profit to koi aapke liye restriction nahi hai lekin agar loss set off karna hai apne against other income to this is the maximum 50000 loss that you can set off in a year next question is brook had been trading profitably as a sole trader for many years However, in the year under thirty-first August twenty-one, she made a trading loss of sixty-five thousand. Rook has a falling income in the tax year twenty-two twenty-three. Trading profit twelve thousand, dividend income nine thousand, property income, furnished holiday accommodation four thousand, and NSI savings certificate interest one thousand. What is the Rook's net income for the tax year twenty-two twenty-three? Assuming she carries the trading losses forward. In case of carry forward of losses, the carry forward losses can only be set off against the trading profit. So, twelve thousand of this profit will be set off against the previous year brought forward trading loss. Remaining nine thousand is your dividend income. Property income is four thousand, but NSI savings certificate interest is your exempt income. So, the total income to be recorded as net of Rook is thirteen thousand. तो हमारे पास क्या है कि ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट 12,000 नो डाउट है बट वी नो दैट द रूल इफ द ट्रेडिंग लॉसेस आर टू बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट फ्यूचर ईयर ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट देन दिस ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट बिकम जीरो एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ ब्रॉड फॉरवर्डिंग दिस 65,000 ऑफ लॉस 
सो दैट इज़ वाई ये ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड एग्जाम सेटअप हो जाएगा डिविडेंड इनकम नाइन थाउजेंड फोर थाउजेंड की प्रॉपर्टी इनकम ये दोनों कंसिडर करेंगे लेकिन सर्टिफिकेट इंटरेस्ट आपकी एग्जाम इनकम है दमियांती हैज़ बिन ट्रेडिंग एज अ सोल ट्रेडर फॉर मैनी ईयर्स हर रिसेंट टैक्स एडजस्टेड ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट एंड लॉसेज हैव बिन फॉर द ईयर हंड्रेड थर्टी फर्स्ट अगस्त ट्वेंटी वन फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड फॉर द ईयर हंड्रेड थर्टी फर्स्ट अगस्त ट्वेंटी टू नाइन्टी थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस द मियांती आल्सो रिसीव बैंक इंटरेस्ट ऑफ फोटीन थाउजेंड ईस्ट टैक्स ईयर वट इज़ द अमाउंट ऑफ ट्रेडिंग लॉस कैरीड फॉरवर्ड टू द टैक्स ईयर ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर एज्यूमिंग दैट द मियांती मेक्स अ क्लेम टू यूज द लॉस इन द करंट एंड प्रायर टैक्स ईयर सो वी हैव टू कंसिडर द टोटल इनकम ऑफ द मियांती फॉर बोथ ईयर्स फॉर द ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू शी हैज़ इनकम ऑफ फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड फोटीन थाउजेंड ऑफ बैंक इंटरेस्ट सो इट इज़ टोटल सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड एंड फॉर द ईयर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री शी हैज़ इनकम नो ट्रेडिंग इनकम बट अदर इनकम ऑफ फोटीन थाउजेंड राइट सो सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस फ्राम द प्रीवियस टैक्स ईयर इट विल बी सेट अपन फोर्टीन थाउजेंड ऑफ करंट ईयर एज दे हैव बिन टोल्ड अस द लॉस इन द करंट एंड प्रायर टैक्स ईयर मीन्स फर्स्ट यू हैव टू सेट ऑफ लॉस अगेंस्ट करंट ईयर फोटीन थाउजेंड एंड दैन प्रायर ईयर सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड सो आउट ऑफ नाइन्टी थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस फोर्टीन थाउजेंड इज सेट ऑफ इन द करंट ईयर एंड सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस इज सेट ऑफ इन द प्रायर ईयर so the remaining loss to be set up to be carry forward is 7000 so this is the requirement but amount of trading loss carry forward to the tax year 23 24 to hame kya karna hai hame dono saalon ki total income calculate karni hai aur as per condition given in the question hame dekhna hai ki pehle current year ki income ke against loss ko set up kare fir prior year ki total income ke against loss ko set up kare to isna 14 aur 16 9 83000 ka loss hum set up kar chuke hain आउट ऑफ नाइन्टी अगर एटी थ्री थाउजेंड का लॉस सेटअप कर दिया है तो रिमेनिंग आपका लॉस मेमोरेंडम लॉस मेमोरेंडम के मुताबिक सेवन थाउजेंड का लॉस कैरी फॉर्ड होगा नाउ सब लीन स्टार्टेड ट्रेड एज अ सोल ट्रेडर ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी हर टैक्स एडजस्टेड ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट एंड लॉसेज फॉर द फर्स्ट टू ईयर्स इन द फर्स्ट ईयर थर्टी फर्स्ट अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन शी सफर अ लॉस ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड इन द सेकेंड ईयर शी हैज़ इनकम ऑफ ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट ऑफ 5000 Sabine was employed until 31st March 2020 earning 45000 per annum so we have to apply the opening year uh, loss relief how much if any of the loss can be offset against sabine's employment income in 1718 so here we need to identify the loss uh, period means uh, uh, in which tax year we have to record how much loss as per rule for the first tax year uh, date of commencement of business 1st november 20 to first tax year ending date 5th april 2021 this is the period for which we have to calculate the loss this is our tax year that is named as 21 2021 loss is noted 25000 but here we need to recognize a loss of uh, november december january february march 5 months period so the 5 months period loss is 10417 10417 of loss belongs to 2021 and remaining loss relates to 2122 so remaining loss is 14583 the in accordance with the opening year loss relief rules the loss can be set up against previous 3 years employment income on fifo basis so we have to consider the loss in the period 2017 18 loss that relate to the tax year 2021 can be carry back 3 years left this is 17 18 so this is the loss to be set up against 17 18 period that 21 22 loss can be set up from 18 19 and onwards right so first of all we need to consider ke hamare paas hum jo loss set up kar sakte hain opening year loss relief ke mutabik wo 3 years back tak ki income pe kiya ja sakta hai aur ye fifo basis pe kiya jata hai what it means that uh, if the loss is sustained in 2021 
तो थ्री ईयर्स में से माइनस कर दें इट विल बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट द प्रॉफिट ऑफ सेवनटीन एटीन और इनकम ऑफ सेवनटीन एटीन तो उन्होंने हमसे सेवनटीन एटीन ही की इनकम के बारे में पूछा था तो हमने ये आइडेंटिफाई किया कि इट इज़ ओनली टेन थाउजेंड फोर सेवनटीन लॉस दैट शुड बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट सेवनटीन एटीन टेन थाउजेंड फोर सेवनटीन सैली हैज़ बिन ट्रेडिंग एज अ सोल ट्रेडर फॉर मैनी ईयर्स इन द ईयर हंड्रेड थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू शी मेड अ ट्रेडिंग लॉस ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड सैली ओनली अदर इनकम ऑफ इनकम इज प्रॉपर्टी इनकम ऑफ एट थाउजेंड ईस्ट टैक्स ईयर इन द टैक्स ईयर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सैली रिलायज रिचार्जबल गेन ऑफ थर्टी टू थाउजेंड ऑन द सेल ऑफ नेकलेस एंड कैपिटल लॉस ऑफ फोर थाउजेंड ऑन द सेल ऑफ पेंटिंग शी हैज़ कैपिटल लॉसिस ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड ऑफ एटीन थाउजेंड वट इज़ द अमाउंट ऑफ ट्रेडिंग लॉस दैट सेल इज ऑफ सेट अगेंस्ट हर चार्जबल गेन इन द टैक्स ईयर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री इन ऑर्डर टू सेट ऑफ लॉस अगेंस्ट चार्जबल गेन फर्स्ट वी हैव टू सेट ऑफ इट अगेंस्ट द टोटल इनकम सो अवर इनकम इज एट थाउजेंड सो फर्स्ट आउट ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड एट थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस विल बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट प्रॉपर्टी इनकम रिमेनिंग लॉस वुड बी थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड बट हेयर एज वी हैव बिन गिवन द कैपिटल लॉस ऑफ द करंट ईयर एज वेल एज द कैपिटल लॉस ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड सो वी नीड टू नो हाउ मच कैपिटल गेन इज अवेलेबल टू सेट ऑफ दीज लॉसेज सो फर्स्ट आउट ऑफ टोटल थर्टी टू थाउजेंड ऑफ गेन फोर थाउजेंड ऑफ करंट ईयर कैपिटल लॉस विल बी सेट ऑफ एंड एटीन थाउजेंड ऑफ ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड लॉस विल बी सेट ऑफ आफ्टर दिस ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस वी हैव ओनली टेन थाउजेंड ऑफ लॉस रिमेनिंग चार्जबल गेन रिमेनिंग That will be set of the loss. So our answer is टेन थाउजेंड तो हमें ये इसमें कंसिडर करना है कि जो अमाउंट आपको चार्जबल गेन के अगेंस्ट सेटअप करनी होती है उसके लिए पहले आपको टोटल इनकम के अगेंस्ट लॉस को सेटअप करना है सो टोटल इनकम में यहाँ पर सिर्फ प्रॉपर्टी इनकम है उसके अगेंस्ट हमने लॉस को सेटअप किया थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड आ गया रिमेनिंग हमने ये देखा कि अब चार्जबल गेन सबसे पहले नेट चार्जबल गेन कैलकुलेट किया जाता है विच मीन्स उस साल की चार्जबल गेन को चार्जबल लॉसेस के साथ सेट ऑफ करना है नैन दिस क्वेश्चन हमें ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड कैपिटल लॉसेस भी गिवन है उन्हें भी सेट ऑफ करने के बाद सिर्फ चार्जबल गेन जो हमारे पास रिमेनिंग रह गया वो टेन थाउजेंड का था दैट कैन सेट ऑफ दिस लॉस कैरोल सीज ट्रेडिंग ऑन थर्टी एथ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी टू हर रिसेंट टैक्स एडजस्टेड ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट एंड लॉसेज है थर्टी नाइन थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड On for the period ended 30th September 22, Carol had unused overlap profit from the commencement of trade that is 12,000. What is the amount of terminal loss available to Carol? So for terminal losses, we have to consider the loss from 6th April 22 to the date of when business is ceased 30th September 22. This is total loss of twenty four thousand for the period first uh, February to thirtieth September. It means a period of February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Eight months loss. So out of this eight months loss, we have to consider loss for the period of six months from six April to thirtieth September. So twenty four thousand divided by eight multiplied by six, it will be eighteen thousand of loss. Then second, we have to consider uh, prior year, the date of cease, and when we have to consider twelve months back period, that will start from first uh, October twenty-two to fifth April twenty-two. We have to consider the loss or profit for this period. So if we consider that uh, from first October twenty-two to thirty-first January. 22 sorry this is 21 first october 21 to 5th april 22 so if we consider that uh, from first october 21 to 31st january 22 the profit is 39000 and we have to consider a profit for the four months period from october november december january so this will be 1/3 13000 and then from 1st february 22 to 5th april 22 so this is a period of 2 months if the loss is 24000 for 8 months what is the loss for 2 months period this will be 6000 so 6000 loss and 13000 profit this is 
total net of uh, 7000 of profit and it should be ignored at, as it is a profit we have to consider about the terminal loss available so the situation is that from 1st october 21 to 5th april 22 the amount that is calculated as a whole for two different accounting period it results in a 7000 profit as the question is about what is the amount of terminal loss we will ignore this then we have to consider further the 12000 of our profit is available so it is total 30000 of terminal loss that is available to carol next is a question about pension and nic which classes of national insurance contribution is a employer responsible for paying in respect of employee remember that uh, class 2 and class 4 belongs to self employed person so one is wrong as well as four is wrong employer is not only responsible for class 1 but also for class 1a for the taxable benefit provided by the employer so answer is c Hamil runs a sole trader business in which he employs an employee who earns 40000 per annum and is provided with a company car for private and business use any benefit uh, provided for private and business use is said to be taxable benefit which is to be considered under class 1a now the question for each class of nic select whether it is paid to hmrc by hamil and also whether it represent part of the total talk tax cost suffered by hamil employee class 1 primarily is paid by hamid to hmrc but it is suffered not suffered by hamid it will be deducted from employee salary employer class 1 secondary is paid by hamid suffered by hamid class 1a for taxable benefit provided to employee in the in this case company car is paid by employer suffered by employer class 2 self employed paid by hamid suffered by hamid class 4 self employed paid by hamid suffered by hamid so sirf ek aapke paas class 1 primary jo employee ki contribution hai uh, tax ki wo for the time being pay karega hamid lekin wo deduct karega employee ki salary se baaki sab suffer bhi hamid ne karne aur pay bhi hamid ne karne lorna has the choice of being either employed or self employed if employed lorna's gross annual salary for 22 23 will be 36000 and if self employed Lorna trading profit for the year ended 5th April 23 will be 36000 right how much more national insurance contribution will Lorna suffer for the tax year 22 23 if she chooses to be employed rather than self employed if Lorna choose to be a self employed person then he she has to pay a tax 36000 minus limit of 12570 at the rate of 10.25% plus as a self employed person she has to pay a tax of 3.15 per week for the period of 52 weeks so this is the total tax suffered by lorna if she consider herself as a self employed person so this is 36000 minus 12570 multiply by 1025 this is 2401 or 2402 and then 3.15 multiply by 52 0.15 this is 163.8 so it is total 2566 and in case she is employed then in that case 36000 minus 12570 and this will be paid at the rate of 13.25 so it is 36000 minus 12570 multiplied by 13.25% this is 3 multiply by this is 3104 so if she consider her employee then she has to pay the difference of this 2566 538 of more tax 
Next question, if he is a director of Mulch Limited and has paid an annual salary of 60,000 during the tax year 22-23, also received an annual bonus of 3,000 and a female in the workplace of canteen open to all staff at a cost of 1040 to his employer. What amount of employees class 1 contribution? Insurance will have been suffered by F for the tax year 22-23. So, next question is during the tax year 22-23, Amari was paid a gross annual salary. So, he is an employee and made an occupational pension contribution of 6000. He also received taxable benefit valued at 5900. What amount of employees class 1 national insurance contribution will have been suffered by Amari for the tax year 22-23? So, we have to consider that up to 50,270 in excess of 12,570, whatever is the amount, the 13.25 percent will be paid as tax. And for the amount in excess of 50,270 but up to 60,000, the tax rate of national insurance contribution is 3.25 percent. So, it is 50,270 minus 12,570 and 13.25 uh, percent of this is 4995 and 60,000 minus 50,270 the difference of 9,730 will be paid at the rate of 325 this is 316. So, the total tax would be 1, 1, uh, 3 and 5. The next question, if is a director of Mulch Limited and has paid annual salary of 60,000. During the tax year 22-23, he also received an annual bonus of 3,000 and free meals in the workplace canteen, open to all staff at a cost of 1040 to his employer. What amount of employees class 1 national insurance contribution and IC will have been suffered by if for the tax year 22-23? Right. So, we need to consider again the same calculation 50,270 minus 12,570 and 13.25 percent of this will be 4,995. But in this question, the gross salary consists of 60,000 of annual salary plus bonus. So, we need to consider the total salary is 63,000 minus 12,570 and difference of this will be paid at the rate of 3.25 percent. So, this will be different from previous question. So, it is 16.39 again 63,000 minus 50,270 multiply by 413, 414 in fact, 414. So, it will be 9045. So, this is A answer. Isaac is an employee of debit limited and is paid an annual salary of 50,000. He makes contribution of 3,000 into the company's occupational pension scheme. In the tax year 22-23, he drove 12,000 business mile in his own car for which he was paid 50 pennies per mile by debit, debit limited. How much implies class 1 NIC is debit limited required to pay in respect of ISAC for the tax year 22-23? So, the approved mileage allowance in case of national insurance contribution is different. As per approved mileage allowance for national insurance contribution, the employee is entitled to receive 45 pennies for all mileage. So, he is entitled to receive 12,000 into 45 pennies and that is 5400, but his employer has given him 50 pennies per mile means 6000. So, he has received 600 more than he is entitled to. So, his gross salary would be 50,000 plus 600 and that is 50,600 of his salary. Now, in this question we have been asked how debit limited is required to pay. So, we need to consider that there are different rates and different uh, limits for the employer 50,600 
माइनस नाइन्टी वन हंड्रेड एंड मल्टीप्लाई बाई फिफ्टीन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव परसेंट दिस इज द रेट फॉर एम्प्लायर रिमेंबर दैट इन द प्रीवियस टू क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू कंसिडर फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ एम्प्लाई दैट एम्प्लाई हैज़ टू पे दैट वट अमाउंट सो दैट इज़ बाई क्लास वन एम्प्लाईज कंट्रीब्यूशन हैज़ बिन कंसिडर फ्राम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ एम्प्लाई दैट एम्प्लाई हैज़ टू पे दिस नाउ वी हैव टू कंसिडर फ्राम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ एम्प्लायर इफ द एम्प्लायर इज गिविंग सम बेनिफिट टू एम्प्लाई वट ही हैज़ टू पे सो दिस विल बी and uh, this will be 6246 that he has to pay